So we move on to our last talk of this session. Um, now we have Lydia Gann from uh, the Signify project, and she is talking to us about Signify, recollecting Singapore's historical biodiversity digitally. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm um, just checking if everyone can hear me loud and clear. Great. Um, thank you, Emma, for the very kind introduction. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Lydia and I am from the Lee Kong Chia Natural History Museum in Singapore. Uh, it's my first time attending the Natska conference. So really excited to be here to share the work that my museum is doing um, with so many partners from all around the world. So specifically for the purposes of the Signify project, because we are working with so many museums globally, um, this would be an excellent time as well to update our partners on our progress and share a bit more about the lessons learned along the way. So Signify is an abbreviation for a rather long project name that you can find right at the top of the screen, which reads Singapore in Global Natural History Museum's Information Facility. So it is a real mouthful to say, but essentially what we aim to do in Signify is to build a digital archive for Singapore's historical biodiversity. To understand why this is necessary, we have to go back in time to about 200 years ago when Singapore was a famous trading port um, frequented by travelers, collectors, and people who are generally interested in natural history. So very often, all these collections that were made um, were returned to the home institutions and countries where these collectors came from. And today, we know that there are Singapore materials all over the world um, in natural history museums as well as repositories. So Signify aims to um, track down all of these specimens to collate, document, and digitize them, thereby um, building an archive for our local biodiversity. Um, and one advantage of this project is that when we visit some of these museums and work with, the, with our partners, we are bringing along the Singapore context and the histories, which hopefully allows us to make a bit more sense about um, the materials and specimens that we come across in doing so, we hope to reconnect with Singapore's natural heritage. So here are the aims of the project. We aim to digitize 10,000 specimens with a focus on types because they're so important for scientific research. We're also looking at specimens of historical significance um, due to the place or the events that made all these collections possible. We have drawn the line at zoological specimens. Um, so unfortunately, we're not looking at anything botanical or geology related. Um, and all these specimens are captured in high resolution in digital format. Um, one key aspect of the Signify project is that we are really focusing on the collaborative partnerships with our um, museums and curators that we are working with because we want to tap into their expertise um, to allow us to make full use of the collections. So the question I'm often getting is, so do you have a proper workflow um, for what you do in Signify? The answer is yes, we do. Um, the first step to even to when we start this project is to build a specimen list um, which provides us an overview of what materials are found in which parts of the world. Um, and to do that, we have consolidated information from published literature, old books, journals, log books, as well as museum databases. And because these varying sources of information are often presented in a very different format, um, we then had to present and tease out the pieces of information that are important to us and to put them down into a standardized format that is useful for the project purposes. So after we have identified the places that are of interest to us, the next step is to then reach out to these museums and hope that they are open to a collaboration with us. Um, when we do successfully establish some sort of a connection with these museums, we will then make a visit down to their collections to locate and image the specimens following a standard protocol. Um, and at this stage, I'm really happy to say that the Signify project is self-sufficient in terms of the equipment that we bring along with us. Um, so the image that you see in the middle here um, is our current setup. It's really lightweight and portable, so it weighs only about 10 kilograms and we can bring, a, bring with it along to anywhere we need it to be at. And at this point, I hope I've convinced the audience that we are professional, we know what we're doing, um, but nonetheless, this is a project and no projects are perfect. We make mistakes, 
But the important thing is to learn from these mistakes and to learn from you know, the lessons that we've gathered along the way to improve our techniques. So whenever people ask me, do you have a favorite specimen in mind? This one comes to mind. So this is a pebble crab that was described from Singapore. It's currently held in the collections of the Natural History Museum in London. And as the name suggests, it is shaped like a pebble. So you can imagine how difficult it is to try and balance this round thing um, on our digitization equipment because it just rolls off in any direction it wants to. And it took the team of three of us six hours before we finally <laughs> got it right. And I'm not sure if you can read the text over here, but it is a perfect encapsulation of our mental states at that point in time. Um, so it, it says, firstly, tilted, do not use. Secondly, also tilted, do not use. Thirdly, well, it's not so tilted, but this time it's blur, so don't use it. By the fourth try, we were getting really, really desperate. So we named the folder fourth try, please work, please, please. And of course it didn't. So fifth time's the charm, and this is the final output of the crab that we have imaged. Um, so it is really a bittersweet moment when I think about how far the team has come along in terms of the techniques um, and skills that we have picked up along the way. Then of course, the last step in the workflow is to process these images um, and prepare them in a format that is suitable for sharing with our partner museums and for putting up on our website. Um, all of these are captured, as I said earlier, in really high resolution. And we hope that this data can be accessed by anyone, anywhere, anytime. Um, on our image, on our specimen website as well, uh, we often put up specimen stories that are interesting. So we tease out bits and pieces um, and fun facts of the species that we come across, or even talk about the histories of how some of these specimens ended up in places they are right now. So just to give everyone an example of the kind of resolution I'm talking about, uh, this is a bird specimen that we imaged in World Museum Liverpool. So it is a red crown barbet, a, a species that is native to Singapore. And if you look at the ventral side of the bird, you can see it's really beautiful colors. And it's taken at such high resolution that you can even make out individual feathers of the birds. So I see a few guests that is really good as a toy one. Um, and so that really showcases um, you know, the kind of quality that we're looking for in a signified project. And of course, this brings me to all um, is not nice and dandy. There were, of course, challenges that we faced early on in the project. So when we did our data collection exercise very early on, one of the things we realized very quickly was that it is virtually impossible to trace back 100% of all the Singaporean material just because there are so much of them. Um, so we had to draw the line at something that was feasible within the scope of the project um, and within the lifespan of the project. So the second question that we ask is then, how can we value add to the project beyond digitization? So firstly would be partnerships with custodian museums, and secondly, to enhance understanding of Singapore's natural heritage through the specimens we come across. When we launched the project um, in August 2022, London became a very natural partner for us because of the deep histories that Singapore and um, UK shared and because of the sheer volume of materials that are within the London collections. So we did a bilateral event um, in both London and Singapore itself. And boy, did we start with a bang. So within Singapore itself, um, there were a lot of press coverage, which was great because it puts um, natural history museums and collections into the spotlight. Um, and it reminds people of the relevance and importance of collections today. So here are some other examples of the collaborations that we've had um, with different partners over the years. We did a video collaboration with Naturalist Biodiversity Center, which talks about the Signify project and how it aligns with the aspirations they had with their collections. We also did a video collaboration with World Museum Liverpool, which um, showcased the extensive historical collections of Stanford Raffles, um, as well as the huge losses that came with the sinking of his fame voyage on the way back to UK. 
Um, and this last one is currently in the works. We are collaborating with the National Museum of Ireland to come up with a booklet that celebrates Singapore Irish ties through natural history specimens and the stories that we tell from them. So beyond the science, we wanted to make the data from the Signify project as accessible as possible to the wider audience. So we did that by demystifying collections, um, which includes breaking down scientific jargons into layman terms that are easier to understand and putting a human element into the stories um, for these specimens so that they are more relatable to people. So I wanted to share an example of the kind of stories that we tell in Signify. Um, over here, you see Terra Tempusa reticulata, which is one of three endemic freshwater crabs in Singapore. It was described by Professor Peter Ng, who happens to be in the mastermind of the Signify project. And the discovery of this crab was really interesting um, because he basically told one of our curators, like, look, this is not a new species. There is no way. This is a new species. Um, and the curator said, no, Peter, please take a look at this crab. And eventually, Peter conceded, and he looked at the crab, and true enough, it was a new species. So now he says, it is all Calvin's fault. Calvin is the name of the curator. Um, so if you're interested in this kind of stories, please visit our Signify socials, which you can find on the left side of the screen. Um, and on the right side of the screen, you have our project website, which doubles up as our data portal. So I'll leave this here for a bit for people to finish studying. All right, and that brings me to the end of my presentation. So thank you, a big thank you to everyone who made Signify a successful project. Um, and special shout out, of course, to the Oxford Natural History Museum, as well as the Nutska Committee for giving me a chance to share about this project with everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lydia, for an uh, awesome talk. So exciting. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yes, Laura. How about the crab? <laughs> so it's repeat the question okay. for all So the question was, how do we balance the crab? <laughs> ah, that's a good one. Um, so right now, we have learned that there are different techniques when it comes to choosing the right um, platform to balance a crab. So previously, we were using a flat dish, flat petri dish. Um, so we basically put the crab on it, and then sometimes we use pieces of blue tech to, to stabilize the crab. Um, right now, we have learned that that might not be the best way of imaging a crab. So rather than using a flat petri dish, sometimes if you use the concave ones, you could properly put the crab into the base of the petri dish and allow it to stand properly, um, and we take the images. So it's really tricky because um, our equipment involves a stack shot, automated stack shot, which we um, connect to our computer. So the, the process is entirely automated, but you do have to set a starting point and an ending point. And if one frame goes slightly out of focus or just tilts slightly, then the entire process is ruined and you have to start all over again, which makes it a pretty tricky process. But yes, we have learned that the concave petri dishes work perfectly. Anyone else? Jack? Hi, thank you, dear. Such a great project. I mean, curious what the press coverage in Singapore was like. What was what were the stories they think about what they specifically in there? So the story was um, what kind of <coughs> stories were picked up by the press when we did the launch of the project. Um, that's a very good question, and I would strongly encourage you to visit our project website because it details um, the entire launch process as well as kind of stories that we showed um, during the press event. Um, so just very briefly, uh, we talked about the very early specimens that were collected from Singapore way back in the 1700s. So these were plant specimens, and we made an exception for them because they were the first ever um, biological records from Singapore. We also talk about the first animals of their respective groups to be described from Singapore. So over here, you see um, the green broad bill, which is the first bird that was um, described from Singapore in the 1800s. And unfortunately, this green broad bill is no longer extant in Singapore. Um, and so it's, it's the kind of stories and the kind of conservation perspectives that we want to draw out and that interests the press and the public as well. 
Anyone else? Oh, yes. Um, it's just more comment. I mean, I, I love the project um, because you all, I, I'm so jealous when you turned up in my lab that you get to see more of the Crepidation collection than I <laughs> have time to do. But at the same time, it was a blessing. Um, you mentioned about the challenges of photography, especially the, the pebble crab. And that then gives me a um, in terms of my organization, a lot of others, you know, going forward for digitizing other parts of that collection, not necessarily from Singapore. Mm -hmm. So I can appreciate the challenge mm -hmm. you there. And uh, I love it because um, I, I've got your Instagram and everything. Um, the speed that you will put the images up, so I go over there to see my stuff and whatever. <laughs> and, and the cultural story and the way that they're written mm -hmm. as well, very accessible. I love the way you explain about types as well. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, members of the public in my family, I sort of uh, recommend that they go and, and, and read your material. So I, I, I'm just a fan, that's all. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.